talk is about the poetry show, its founding and value. First, it's necessary to understand the context in which it was conceived. It dates back to the planning of the reading program in 1982. This entailed research in the history of the teaching of reading, in college textbooks, and the journals of professional organizations. It was necessary to understand the raging debates in the field. For me, the truth was always somewhere in the middle. For example, today's emphasis on the science of reading is not new. It is an age-old method of teaching reading by way of phonics, morphemes, and structural analysis. I don't disavow that science has brought it to the fore again, but neither should we throw away other research-based approaches. A reading program allots time and wise application of various methods. In the 1980s, phonics was abandoned in favor of a method called whole language. I stood my ground and kept phonics in our program, a lonely exercise at the time. While maintaining an openness to learn from the benefits of whole language, phonics is a base for all students and particularly to address the needs of children struggling with dyslexia. My observation is that how a child learns to read is magical. We need to include all methods to some degree or another in order for each child to find their way. A point to beyond debate for us is that children learn to read by reading. Teachers, should have literature-rich classrooms, the practice of reading aloud every day, introducing children to every genre with joyful experiences, whether they are reading yet or not, having rich inquiry-based discussions, self-confidence by an ever-growing ability to learn to read by reading, reading, reading. If instilling a love of literature into children is not present, the battle is already lost. Why do I give such a long introduction to the poetry show? From the very beginning, through this research process, I realized poetry should never be crowded out of a reading curriculum. Most recently, I had the privilege of attending a webinar given by Nikki Grimes. She said, paraphrased, the love for the music of words is innate in children. It is a gift that must be intentionally cultivated. As a winner of the Children's Literature Legacy Award for lasting and significant contribution to children's literature, I believe her. We have witnessed the phenomenon in the poetry show the experience cultivates this innate love. The music of poetry rings and sings inside a child. Figurative language helps to make the music. Rhyme, alliteration, and wordplay delight them. This poem has all three. Listen. A flea and a fly and a flu were in prison, so what could they do? Said the fly, let us flee, let us fly, said the flea. So they flew through a flaw in the flu. Onomatopoeia is so fun. Words like whoosh, swizzles, and bloop. Simile and metaphor cultivate thinking skills. How does one thing enhance the meaning of another? For example, Langston Hughes' poem, Hold fast to dreams. Without them, life is a broken winged bird that cannot fly. Emily Dickinson's poem, Hope is a thing with feathers. Words and the spaces between the words spark the imagination 
to higher regions of the soul. For the poetry show, memorization is necessary so that the words of great poets remain in their soul. This compels us to seek for the best. I discovered early on that I could let the editors of anthologies compile poems for me. The Random House Book of Poetry for Children, edited by Jack Prolutsky, the first poet laureate for children. I, too, sing America, Three Centuries of African American Poetry, edited by Catherine Clinton. The Oxford Book of Children's Verse, editor Siona and Peter Opie. Piping Down the Valley's Wild, edited by Nancy Larrick. She was the founder of the International Reading Association. Besides her profound influence on literature and editor of 14 anthologies of poetry for children, in the 1950s, she was an early voice that decried the absence of Black characters in children's books. 101 Famous Poems, edited by the Library of Congress, Great classic poems by poets such as Emerson, Keats, Tennyson, Poe, Longfellow. I've read the complete poems of Emily Dickinson. Most of the poems by Robert Frost, Mary Oliver, and Langston Hughes. From these, I made a list of top ones that are appropriate for age levels. From the beginning, we sought the best in the history of African-American poets, Paul Dunbar, Maya Angelou, Nikki Giovanni, Wendelin Brooks. We have sought great poems from other cultures, such as Rumi, Pablo Neruda, Basho, Japanese master of haiku, China's Li Po. More recently, award-winning Chicano poets, and Joy Harjo, the first Native American United States Poet Laureate. We draw uh, poetry from past laureate Billy Collins. The Young People's Poet Laureates are beloved by children. Their poems show up in poetry shows over the years. Marianne Hoberman, Naomi Shihab Nye, and Jack Prolutsky. When you come to a poetry show, you will see an array of poems in the program. Serious and funny poems, classic, current, and diverse poets. This talk described the theory and background of the show. In the second part of this talk, I will describe the practical value, our concrete objectives, and testimonials from the students about their experiences.